Thank you, Rahul. And uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, BW Hotelier and Bhuvnesh to having me on this show and uh, being with all of you. Uh, it's been it's been an extremely extremely tough time for all of us. Uh, I I moved in from uh, Kolkata after opening that hotel, and you know what happens in a first one year of hotel operation, and especially when it it, it starts doing extremely well. Uh, you know, uh, when it starts in the first year of the operation, if hotel uh, achieves around 60% occupancy of, of that size, so it, it is, and uh, and from there, I landed up here and the lockdown started. So, for me, uh, introduction to this market and along with that, this pandemic. So, I, I see it as a, uh, you know, a hotel industry as such, uh, it's the first to go out and the last to come in in these kind of uh, any, any any world event which, uh, which has a negative impact. So uh, that's uh, the travel industry and the hotel industry goes out that way. Now, in terms of uh, profitability, the first quarter, which, which was as good as uh, the uh, entire business came to a grinding halt and uh, uh, everybody dropped numbers uh, very, very heavily and uh, it it did uh, impact in terms of rooms it didn't uh, impact in terms of food and and the cost which we normally have is 80 percent or 70 percent 80 percent is on the fixed cost nature so uh, the first quarter if we see the results of all the all the companies and we saw uh, there is a huge uh, uh, I, I, I've never seen a, a negative bottom line ever in my career so far, and this is the first time we are seeing this. So, <clears throat> so what has happened is uh, it, it is not going to come back so soon. We need to uh, rationalize our cost completely. So, the steps which we which we have taken uh, to uh, to rationalize the cost, we've gone through each and every. Uh, line on the PNL statement, and the major impact comes from HLP and uh, SWP. Uh, ITC as a company, we have not uh, we have not laid off any people. We have not had any salary cuts. Uh, we have not done that. But at the same time, we are we are very lucky that uh, we have not stopped our uh, expansion plan. So uh, since our expansion plan is on and our new hotels are going to uh, debut very, very soon and there are some tie-ups which are happening so we can spread thin and move our people across to other areas. So that's why SWB, SWB cost can be taken care of. The second is in terms of SWB uh, cost is the multifunctionality. The uh, people, I mean, this, is the, this is the new normal. We, you know, earlier we could do, a, a person does only one kind of a job and that's about it. But now the multifunctionality is the name of the game. So do you need to hire the contractuals? Do you need to hire contractual agencies to do certain jobs which we, we can do it ourselves? So we have done a lot of this engineering and last four months have been very, very exciting in terms of that way that is kept extremely, extremely busy and uh, kept working on these uh, and it's, it's, a, it's a continuous, it's evolving process. So uh, what we are working on these costs and at the same time, uh, keeping our workforce totally engaged. Uh, how do we engage them? We can, there are a couple of ways uh, doing that. One is uh, keeping them uh, the, the online training courses, online training classes, so that the skill levels go up. So that's, that's very useful. Communication level uh, training goes up. That's very useful. And the third is that they are the people. If you have 500, 600 people employed in a particular hotel, can I make them all as a sales resources? So that all uh, all of them get in touch with, most of them get in touch with the consumers so that our business goes up. Now, uh, looking at what are the channels available for us to, uh, uh, for uh, driving the revenue business. There is room, room revenue, we all know it's all gone down and the kind of customer which has come into uh, into the hotels now, though we did, we did around 35-40% occupancy uh, in the last couple of months, but where has that business come from? That's that's a very different line of uh, business, which is either a repatriation or a healthcare workers or, or or essential services, these kind of businesses. The transient is completely gone, FID is not there at all, so where does this business come from? Then in terms of food and beverage, uh, restaurants have not been allowed to open, and at least in the Bombay market, but wherever it's been allowed to open, we, we can see certain uh, numbers uh, getting driven, especially in Delhi market. Uh, 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 it's just open a week, 10 days back, and uh, the result what we're seeing is, is, is very, very good in the restaurant. So there is a pent-up demand. So business needs to go up from there. 
then the third is have we thought of new ways of looking at businesses uh, different verticals so whether it's a food delivery vertical everybody spoke about that whether it's a laundry service whether it is home cleaning services whether it is uh, the consultancy services and all that but there are lots being done at this point of time in every group and uh, working on that so that there's some kind of a revenue stream comes in because uh, certain costs are of fixed nature and nothing you can do about it though you can do a variability and your fixed costs uh, move them towards the variable costs so so that that is being done uh, in 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 all areas and though uh, i would still see that this is still not a revival phase is still on a survival phase in most of the cities and uh, the, there is uh, there is uh, still some more time till the time we the number of cases are going up still time for this to uh, get settled down but we got to learn to live and uh, the economy has to move on the economy has to win uh, from this war until unless that happens we will not be able to uh, uh, put the numbers on the bottom line and bottom line is something which will uh, which will uh, make sure that we all survive but i'm sure that there uh, from the learning of last 5 months in terms of uh, uh, the major cost heads each each one of us have worked on that and uh, uh, and, and and i'm sure the costs have shrunk in, in what the normal would have been there and and uh, and looking at the revenue numbers to be driven up that that's what will take care of it thank you atul good question actually also i picked up from what you said that let us not think this is revival we are still in survival phase and how you are using your growth to actually protect the jobs of your employees and what was very interesting as a takeaway for me was how as the leader in the field you are telling your workforce that hey everybody is doing sales irrespective of whatever title they may wear so i think that's a very important cue for everybody in the business and i was also very happy when you spoke of pent up fnb demand because that shows green shoots of recovery that will actually be very sustainable thank you moving on manish you were supposed to be launching the hotel and your market on launch strategy has been disrupted so when do you start the hotel now and given the fact that you were supposed to be focusing on the airport business and airlines what segments are you going to now be focusing on and along with this what's your plan to rein in your costs so much funded i mean we were close to the past this thing 5 months um closure was a conscious decision because we 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 wanted to ensure that all our uh, team members all our business partners all on the guest basically are, are with us are in a safe zone because uh, what happened back in march nobody was actually aware of on what what's going to be the, the next steps in terms of uh, government norms in terms of on um, bmc in terms of uh, circulars coming out that the hotels will become hospitals and, and hotels overnight becoming uh, quarantine zones so hence uh, the management had had a conscious uh, call over here that our hotel will remain closed uh, until such time that we know that it's basically uh, safe to open now on those months it's now been basically a uh, 5 months we we've been assured that all our parameters in terms of safety uh, for for guest and and for our team members are as per industry norms so we are very very happy to announce that hope hopefully in the in the next few weeks or so by month and we should go live and once we go live we basically um, um, this partnered with a very very good app which is called fresh me so all your guest aspects have have become um no touch or low touch so we ensure that as the guest walks in he has a he or she has a safety um, barrier however not a, a compromising on the human feel similarly on our team members we uh, launched a program called safe me safe we where we educate them from home to work and and back to 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 uh, home 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 again how you handle yourself how you look on uh, the look, uh, look after yourself because for any a uh, company you you may have a good hotel you may have the best policies you um, you may have the best this thing this software too but your uh, team is your greatest asset so our understanding has been that we have to look after our biggest asset which is our, our team members nevertheless overheads are for all hotels and like for us as well 
So we've been sure that then the past this thing, uh, five months we've gone back on, on on the drawing board, worked on the costs, brought them down. However, I'm I'm proud to say that we've not mm, laid off anybody. For um, payroll costs, we've been helped by our uh, corporate office, and they've helped us out in giving the payroll month on month. And um, we are very very happy with that because other companies, uh, not just hotels, IT companies, manufacturing firms. Um, Across the board, have had have had this thing uh, uh, layoffs. So, uh, keeping your workforce more uh, more, uh, more more motivated in this entire this thing this thing, uh, time period has been our prime focus. Now, it's it's not just on the financial front, but it's also on on the emotional front because we've seen that in the past five months, a lot has happened in the human aspect where people have reacted this dif uh, differently. In terms of the entire lockdown, from Bollywood to movies to other aspects too, you've seen um, what, uh, what's gone wrong with the world. So on our side, we've even ensured that the department heads, the employees, the HR department, we've had a very, very uh, counterproductive uh, five months where we've interacted with them virtually on site, and we've ensured that that the team is basically motivated. In terms, they need help. In terms of uh, financial help, in in case they need any emotional help, in case of anything in the family, we've been there for them. We also have a team which is living on property for the past this, uh, five months, who are looking after the entire hotel in a brilliant way, and we're very very indebted to uh, those guys. On the revenue streams, we've asked our sales team to basically think out, outside the box because um, in these scenarios. Uh, Adaptability is, is your key to survival. So we have to ensure we are, we adapt on the new norms. So whether it's basically work from hotel where we've got a few corporates lined up where we're um, um, giving them a few flows and we, we're giving them banquet venues too where they will work from here or you've got your food catering services or laundry services or pay now, stay later. So we worked on, on that as well. But as a MICE hotel, our business will only happen once large groups, weddings, events, and all all come back. So we hope for the best that, that the governments, that the pharma companies who are working on the vaccine, we have that in due course of time. Because with all what we are basically all trying, they all stopgap measures. Money will not um, come back with, with that. We, we all have our bank EMIs to pay. We all have our loans to pay. We all have our management uh, fees to pay, contracts to pay. So un unless and until we have the big business back on the books, it looks difficult. So um, and I hope and pray that the next this thing, this thing, uh, six months or eight months, we are back in business because, because in case we are not, I can foresee a lot of big boys and the small boys locking doors and this thing uh, shutting down which I hope doesn't happen. So let's hope for the best that the vaccine comes out soon for all of us. Thank you, Manish. While you did give some caution, saying let's hope for the best and businesses don't shut down, I must actually appreciate the bold calls that you've taken. First, to actually shut down the property. And second is, despite that, to not lay off anybody and retain your uh, payroll. That's been very bold, and I wish you the very best for your October you. opening. Now, the years, I wanted to also ask the leaders that besides carrying a day-to-day -day microscope, all of you, given the unique positions and perspectives you have, you also have a telescope into how the industry is going to get shaped. And what are you seeing emerge? So my question to Praveen is that how do you see this pandemic altering consumer habits for good? So Rahul, a um, couple of things that I see uh, happening with consumer habits, some are actually, uh, I would say, scary because they directly impact our business. And uh, one of them is we are seeing that more and more people are getting used to doing business on uh, audiovisual, right? So they're all happy with the Zooms and Microsoft Teams. And what that is going to happen is that as we move ahead in the future, I see that uh, you would see a certain sector of business which was purely corporate would disappear because uh, meetings would be, people would be okay to meet uh, as the softwares are also getting much and much better over time. So that's, that's one trend which kind of worries us. 
Second thing I'm seeing is that uh, I also see that the consumer has spent about six months sitting at home where they have been uh, you know, working from home at the same time, interacting with their families and a lot of doing a lot of gourmet stuff, right? So people have been cooking, people have been trying to learn new cuisine and so on. So I see that out of the lockdown, the consumer is going to come out being a lot more educated, which means well, we have to get ready to have a consumer who understand wines uh, as well as our, our uh, restaurant managers and who understands uh, food from different parts of the world as well because he's been cooking that food, right? So that's very interesting uh, and a great analogy because there is always an opportunity in an adversity. Third thing that I see is that uh, consumer is getting used to doing it yourself. And uh, that's in a way good for us because that's again an opportunity, which means that um, in the future, consumer doesn't want even in a luxury product, he doesn't want, uh, you know, a butler standing outside his room. He doesn't want to kind of have people drooling over him when he's in a restaurant. So they are kind of getting this minimalistic style of service, which is great. And the fourth thing I would say is technology, which I said earlier also, that consumer is embracing technology very quickly. Uh, so again, we need to figure out how can we use this technology to reach to them faster, to be able to go back and remodel our processes. Because on one side, we have a challenge that we need to bring down our cost and we need to bring down, uh, you know, the, how can we kind of reach people faster. So technology will be helpful in both those forms. And I do see social distancing continuing for another six months or physical distancing, as I should call it. For six to eight months till the time we see that either the cases go down or herd immunity sets in. Uh, after that, we do see that the demand is going to be back. In fact, uh, we are seeing a lot of younger consumer are the first ones to, to step out and uh, they are not afraid because of uh, partially because of the reason that, you know, the virus doesn't cause us so much of damage when you're young. So, uh, as I said, over the weekends, we've been seeing a lot of young consumers coming out uh, using facilities and so on. And the last thing that I would say is there are a lot of innovative business models which are emerging out. Um, for example, we just uh, this morning I was with a client who wanted to do a virtual wedding where uh, the request was that the wedding would be done at home on Zoom and the meal will be sent up to 400 people to their houses. And uh, we were doing food trials and uh, that's kind of quite unique. So we, we've never done something like that in the past. We've done virtual functions and virtual business meetings with dinner. But a virtual wedding would be quite interesting. So we see that for the short term. And in the long term, I think technology, leaner business models, uh, uh, consumer being very educated, but not really getting fussy. So I think we will get, get specifically for Indian industry, we would have a little bit more like, uh, uh, I would say, Western consumers, a little bit like the American market, where you will have different models. And if you are in a high end luxury, then people will understand that they have to pay more for it. Fantastic. You really have a high powered telescope into the consumer. And I like the way that you're describing that with the consumer becoming minimalistic, it is actually an opportunity for hotels to reorient the business model using technology to serve consumer needs like that. Now, moving on to Chris, I wanted to ask you. Lots of youngsters are planning to enter the industry now. You know, and some are already in the midst of studying. So with this pandemic, there are lots of concerns with this demographic. So what is your advice to youngsters who are planning on joining the industry today? Chris, uh, unmute yourself, please. Ah, there you go. Can you hear me now, Rahul? Sorry. Yes, um, yes. Go ahead. Great. Great question, Rahul. Thank you very much. I actually did receive quite a few emails and messages um, from students in India and from overseas because I'm lucky to be part of, uh, of, an, of an alumni and I'm board member of an alumni of hotel schools outside India and uh, engage very frequently with students. Students who either just joined the trades as uh, in hotel schools who are about to graduate. Now, a lot of them are extremely worried. A lot of them question themselves if they joined the right industry. They are not sure where is the future. Now, each and every one of them, I said very clearly that this is also an opportunity. 
Now, we also have to differentiate. There are colleagues who join the ranks of the hospitality uh, workforce who have to work. They cannot afford not to work. Um, but the others who can afford and sit back and wait for a job, I would use this time very clearly for either do voluntary work. When I say voluntary work, this could be an NGO. This could be in a hotel to expand your skills or in a completely different field that you may take interest in, but didn't have time to explore or to study during the last few years while you were studying hospitality industry. I think if we as leaders who look at CVs in the future, see colleagues who maybe have a gap or spend some time doing something else, this should be appreciated and, and uh, looked at as an experience they gained uh, to gain insight to 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 work, if, especially if you work with NGOs, to to understand the mindset of the consumer and people. Then, I uh, would I always tell them, listen, if you can do voluntary work either outside the industry, work for an NGO, study something else completely different where you have an interest in, or educate yourself further in the hospitality field. Maybe you have the chance to go towards an MBA now instead of doing it in two or three years. Or see if uh, you can do some work in a hotel that would be happy to have you maybe for a month or two doing something completely different. You know, expand your culinary skills. I mean, Parvin just said uh, our waiters and sommeliers need to be very well educated in what they're doing or communicating with the guests in things like wines. Maybe this is a great opportunity to deepen your knowledge of uh, spirits, wines, and so on, right? And you become the leader in the hotel that you will join in the future in that field. <clears throat> and obviously, this is all a bit different for colleagues who, uh, who, who can't afford not to work, who need to look for a job. In that case, I had two, two cases where I said, listen, we, le we really need a job. Uh, we, we actually, I actually helped them to find a job in another field for the time being, because there are industries out there who are not as much uh, affected by this COVID crisis, and some industries are actually thriving. So we, for both of them, I was able to find jobs doing something different for the time being. And they may like it, what they're doing now, but hopefully they come back to the hospitality industry. But uh, the worst thing you can do is do nothing, if you ask me. It's, it's a great time to expand your skills. That's what I think. I used to clean tennis courts and mini golf places at the time, <laughs> long time ago. <laughs> Brilliant, Chris. So good advice to youngsters to say, upskill yourself and also get into adjacent skill sets. And very interesting advice to say, can they pick up volunteering yeah. or also work, support NGOs? And then the industry leaders should give them relevant credit when they come back to join a job stream. Related to this, Chris, I also wanted to ask you, you know, you've seen impact of regional pandemics and such situations in different geographies. But this pandemic is global in nature. Yeah. So what impact do you foresee on the industry's business fundamentals as a result of this ongoing pandemic? So like my colleague said before, look, people always feel the need to travel. It's just a question of airlift being available, a question of visas being issued. Um, a question of confidence coming back once the vaccine is widely available and inoculation happens. So, as I mentioned previously, I don't foresee this as a long-term issue for our industry. I think this will all come back. Look, if I look back, I mean, I went through, uh, I went through Arab Springs, I went through typhoon, cyclones. I had an embargo where the tanks were standing not too far away from the hotel. Um, We've seen terrorist attacks in Egypt uh, a few years ago. People tend to forget. People have a very short-term memory if they like something, and travel is something people like. Believe me when I tell you, as soon as a vaccine is released, the guards will fall, people will change perception, people will travel again. It's not something that will have a long-lasting effect. Maybe how they travel, how they look at hotels will maybe change. Uh, they probably will look not just at a star ranking or a TripAdvisor ranking. They probably spend a bit more time researching on hygiene and, and, and other points that are important to them, right? 
Um, we all remember the last decade, everyone talked about uh, going green, sustainability. So sustainab but sustainability was the last few years. Health and hygiene and sanitation will be probably for the next few years. That's what I foresee. Fantastic. So what you are saying is that the natural tendency of humans to explore, our natural wanderlust will make yeah. the industry come back. Oh, and what we have to be very careful is how do we also project and maintain our hygiene, our cleanliness, and our safety standards? Yeah, you know, a lot of uh, the colleagues have to understand this is not just a new initiative we're doing right now. This is here to stay. We have to understand this as a business, and I think we as leaders do understand it. But it, it is of great importance that our associates and colleagues understand it. Look, I mean, we had stories where we gave our guests QR codes. Unfortunately, even the, even some guests don't understand. They say, "No, I want the heart. I want the I want the real menu." Um, we talked about technology just before, right? Uh, another colleague talked about it. I think technology is here to stay. I think technology will act. The deployment and development of technology will accelerate, and will be more important in the whole guest experience. That's what I think. I always try to push technology in my environment, and I was always held back. People always told me, you know, it's maybe not the guest experience we want, but what I tried to achieve over the last five years is now suddenly achieved in five months. Be it online newspapers, be it online service delivery, ordinary, whatever you, whatever you mentioned, it's all coming, it's all there, right? Everyone is rolling it out. So great point that this crisis is actually accelerating the adoption of technology, at least at 10x. So what you thought would take five years, you are seeing it happen in front of you in five months. Well, the deployment, I put it this way, I was always pushing for it, right? And there was always a certain hesitation, though the guest wants a proper newspaper, the guest wants a proper menu. You know, People always use, no, but you know, five star traditional hotel hospitality companies, we shouldn't do that. I disagree. I completely disagree. I think if it, listen, why would I not download an app and read my newspaper on a tablet if I can't choose from 2,000 newspapers? I may be in Mumbai, but I'm not interested in the Mumbai mirror because I'm only here for two days. I want to read some other newspaper. I can give it to you now because of technology, right? Just to use an example. Great. Great point on consumers adopting technology for convenience greater and linking to what actually Praveen was saying earlier. This is also an opportunity for us to rationalize our expense on multiple touch points that we have traditionally created for the business. Now, Sharad, I wanted to ask you, you've seen this pandemic and you've seen other different situations in the past. So what are your learnings from this pandemic that you think general managers should focus on for the future? So uh, I, I think the, the biggest thing that uh, this pandemic has taught a lot of us is, uh, uh, you know, I think we need to we need to look at skills in a slightly different way. Skills are not just about uh, hotels or you know, it's about food and wine. I think skills are more larger skills we look at is, and I think the most important skill is is adaptability, which I would call a skill now. Uh, and I think uh, uh, this is what, and, 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 you know, this was one incident that happened. Uh, there will be other smaller ones that will continue to happen. I mean, we, we've all seen through our careers, uh, ups and downs in in business and 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 different business cycles uh, for different industries. Uh, so uh, I, I think just to increase our own skill sets is is extremely important. And I think from a, a organizational point, I think uh, you know coming back to the most important uh, value that that we have or the strength that Marriott had has is is the culture. And uh, I think culture has to be a top priority always. Uh, good times, bad times, ugly times, wherever we are. And, and clearly the organizations which were strong on culture uh, will come out a lot stronger after this. And uh, let's keep in mind also that culture cannot be copied. 
so you know we we we're all trying to compete with each other on on marriott on wheels and uh, you know all of those but uh, yeah we pick up good practices from there but culture is something that that uh, i think we cannot be copied and and everything that we speak of i mean technology is also a part of culture that how how open we are to accept technology uh, how open we are to um, uh uh you know for the change we we spoke of i think the previous session spoke a lot about multi skilling and uh, mm -hmm. you know i would look at multi skilling in 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 just two very different ways number one is i think for multi skilling uh, and also part of culture i need to start from myself why do i need a housekeeping associate cleaning my office why can't i do it up myself you know if i have a little plant in my office why can't i look after that plant myself and that's where multi skilling should start and uh, the second is i think we we've, we've all grown up with uh, in hotels of this is this department this is this department we we get and because of that we get very very departmental i think we stop stop think st start thinking beyond departments uh, we look at uh, of course there is expertise that an engineer has and and a finance uh, associate has expertise in something and a kitchen associate has uh, expertise in something uh but the, i think for a lot of things there are a lot of things in in a hotel which are which are uh, very very uh it just needs common sense it doesn't need uh you know a high skill level and uh look at multi skilling and uh, uh you know as i said i think whatever we can do to help our associates uh because we're looking at this pandemic then it will be technology then it will be something else uh, and and we don't know what 5 years down the line is going to be one can't really uh, see what 5 years down the line what hotels are going to be yeah some things will will stay common luxury will 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 continue to be there you know uh, personalization will continue to be there but it will be in a very very different way i mean google thinks of personalization in a very very different way we think of personalization in a very different way so uh, uh, i think just do what it takes to increase the adaptability quotient of our associates and uh and you know for the future i think the one one lesson i would board myself keep in mind is keep uh, you know keep uh, fixed costs uh, controlled as much as possible as much as possible keep all costs variable uh and uh, don't underestimate uh, any business opportunity uh you know but one year down the line who would have thought that you know we would put so much of our energies uh, on on minutely looking at the the sales summary of of our our takeaway menu of marathon wheels uh, we we study it with a lot of lot of care now uh, so let's not underestimate any business opportunity the next few business opportunities could be about uh, co-working spaces could be about uh, uh, you know Uh, consulting uh, could be about uh, training uh, you know training uh, uh, a lot of uh, you know we spoke of uh, going to people's homes and you know there are there are a lot of things that we can do around there as well uh, and and i think let's let's all be prepared for the worst uh, you know uh, what we all learned many many years back of uh, hope for the best and be prepared for the worst uh, and Well, one can't say the worst is behind us. We really don't know. Uh, so be be an optimist. Uh, uh, you know, our our uh, we we've got this uh, uh, little uh, initiative that Marriott has started. It's it's an app which is called uh, 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 M Equilibrium, M Equilibrium, which which kind of helps people in their uh, balancing their 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 thoughts and keeping keeping everybody up in their in their in their spirits and. Uh, you know uh, uh mr menon shared a uh, uh, note a couple of days back and uh, you know everybody does a self assessment in that and and you know the best thing is you know he said mr menon said you know my 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 statement there is that i'm an optimist uh be an optimist i think we look for the positive things uh, see what we can do more uh but let's be prepared for the worst uh, let's be prepared for the worst because uh what will also happen in the next couple of months i think even if, if there is a vaccine uh the vaccine will take time uh what will also happen as a result is i mean a consequence of what we lose in this one year disposable incomes are going to go low uh and with disposable incomes going to going low 
uh, people's thinking is going to change. You know, the the credit card mentality probably probably will change. People earlier were a lot more, uh, uh, you know, easy in 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 taking credit. Now I think that mentality will probably change. Uh, and that was the difference in in people who were born in 40s and 50s and 60s versus the people who were born 70s and 80s. Uh, I mean, we we thought very differently than the previous generation. So, I think the overall thinking of every every person will will have some some bit of change. These two years will have a huge impact on on consumer behavior, on on our our thinking, on the society. Uh, so. Let's let's be prepared that uh, you know business may not come back to the 2019 levels very very soon. So let me while I heard you speak about common sense, which you said is not so common these days, and the focus on adaptability, and everybody seems to be reiterating that our workforce has to become multi-talented and multi-tasking. Let me quickly ask you, Sharad, when do you see that? the industry is going to come back to the 2019 level we'll take a while i i think we'll take a while uh, uh, we'll we'll take quite some time uh, and i would only talk in ref part uh, i think the first thing that will happen uh, is is occupancies will go up next couple of months first the occupancies will rise and then the rates will ri- uh, will rise uh, the good thing uh, and and if one was to just look at in comparison to 2008-9 uh, you know the financial meltdown one was uh, india wasn't as badly impacted as the rest of the world then i think at this stage india is a little more impacted uh, the good thing is though that uh, I, i i don't think there will be as much new inventory coming in in the next 4 5 years as it did in after 2009 and i think between 2009 14 there was a lot new inventory came in. uh so that's going to be a bit of a help uh, that for us to get back to 2019 rep par level uh, and until then i think great opportunity in 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 food and beverage i i feel food and beverage will will come out uh, a lot lot stronger uh, than and and it has a lot more of our our energies and focus now great thank you quickly to move on to kunal two things one is when do you see 2019 levels being achieved again and secondly i was hearing you earlier when you said 55% of your business was gds so with this pandemic how do you also see the total hotel distribution landscape change <laughs> i think uh, so i see that by 2022 somewhere mid is when some of the companies production should start coming up to the levels that it was for me in bangalore i think we will see uh, we might not be doing the same revenue but occupancy will definitely be in i think the adrs will be slight depressed still uh, as far as the question on distribution goes i think uh, what will happen right now is with your traditional gds and big accounts contracted accounts reducing and almost diminishing uh, otas will gain tremendous amount of ground uh, i think there'll be lot of lot of uh, competition online i think companies are going to spend a lot more money on search engine opt- optimization just to be able to make sure that they are able to retain their direct booking sources uh, and and see by the end of it post post covid era uh, anybody who's managed to survive and has managed to stand up on their two feet any hotel will have some ground to negotiate with these otas to be able to get decent rates and continue to work i think what should be done right now is we shouldn't give up on pre covid distribution strategy of ours to try to convert more direct we should keep our focus on it though today these otas will be a lot more meaningful to us momentarily but in the long run i don't think we should abdicate our previous strategy of how we were managing our distribution so that's what i see happening on the distribution front right now. thank you so you are saying keep focus on driving business direct to the brand that should you know that should get your investment and your energies even today and and one more on this uh, yesterday our business model was very simple because we could deal with 125 companies and still get our 200 room nights what will happen now is we'll actually be dealing with 500 companies to get our 200 room nights 
So our sales force and a lot more ground sales activity will happen in not only our feeder market, but local market. Relationships is going to be Thank the you. key differentiator here. Atul, I was hearing you earlier when you said that, look, FNB used to be key to our business, but it is suffering. Yet at the same time, when you spoke of Delhi, you saw green shoots of demand come up very fast. There was lots of pent up FNB demand coming back to the market. So how do you see this pandemic impacting the industry's FNB landscape? I'm audible. Yes, you are. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, with regards to FNB, I'll put this, divide this into uh, basically three uh, uh, categories. One is uh, outlet restaurants, second is banquets, and third is the, which we have, which everybody has created this food delivery vertical. So, in terms of banquets, obviously, the that's that I don't see that that kind of demand coming back where we were, where we were used to larger hotels, we were used to doing uh, 1,000 people, 1,500 people and a large number of weddings and corporate mice events, exhibitions and all that. So that's not going to come back very, very soon. So uh, that we'll have to keep it aside. Like uh, one of my co-panelists uh, said that uh, like in Europe, uh, there are small weddings, but much more lavish weddings and all that. So that uh, that is emerging out in terms of that and also the virtual uh, uh, events which are happening and uh, uh, like Praveen mentioned uh, with regards to virtual weddings and virtual events and I, I'm glad that we've already been able to do that at, at ITFLs. Uh, I have uh, done around three or four events of uh, 400 people uh, conference lunch. So, you know, getting lunch delivered, delivered at in time to at uh, all over India location and people are meeting virtually. So that's happened. Virtual weddings have happened. So it's, it's already happened. Uh, and it's, that's, that's what even the event industry has to survive. So obviously they are, uh, they are also partnering with hotels and selling these events so that uh, one is that you can celebrate your wedding at the same time, you can share the food as well. Uh, and you can curate the menu uh, and it can be delivered at uh, all locations in India. And that's the strength all these uh, all of us have as uh, large chains. So this is with regards to banquets. And then secondly, uh, uh, outlets. Uh, we have opened our hotel, uh, restaurants at uh, Calcutta, at uh, Delhi, at Bangalore. And results have been, uh, the, there is a lot of pent up demand. The number of covers, uh, though we have to keep our physical distancing and in terms of uh, keeping uh, the norms uh, prescribed by Ministry of Home, apart from, even then, the kind of uh, demand which is coming in, uh, like the green shoots, is, yes, this is very encouraging that people are willing to come in. And obviously, as an industry, we need to uh, really assure our uh, clients that the hotels are absolutely safe places to go and we take care of that. So there are some comments, if you, even if you go on to TripAdvisor and see, so people have written that this is a hospital-like uh, uh, care we, are, we feel so safe here in these in these hotels, but at the same time, warmth has not gone. So that's that's a very very important uh, aspect of uh, uh, the restaurants. Though out, uh, people are not. Uh, it, that's very sad part that the thirty percent of the restaurant. As we we read some reports which are on a contract, they, they may not dine out restaurant may not open. So because of uh, high costs and uh, they not been able to sustain. So uh, but for hotels have the opportunity to. Uh, to take care of that part of it, to uh, to serve to that demand. Now the third part, which is uh, which is a uh, food delivery vertical. This is this is absolutely like Sharad said, Marriott and Beals and some other. Uh, most of us have done something on that. Again, the packaging, like somebody said, uh, creating that demand. Uh, you know, the, the customer is going to be more uh, uh, aware. So we are we are we are actually taking part in that. What are we doing? We are sending them do your own kits. So we, we're sending the ingredients and the customer is combining it all together. So they're really enjoying it today. We even give them the videos of the, how the chef is making the dish. Or you have, even have an opportunity to talk to a chef and create that dish. That's happening. Our Fantastic. Souvenirs have conducted classes. That's, you know, you pay a, a piece of maybe a thousand rupees and then you do a two hours uh, souvenir class or a mixologist class. So all these ideas are coming from a young uh, talent which is there in the hotels. and actually creating revenues out of that. So 
all these things are possible and people are willing to do these things now because there is so much time available. So there is a lot of pent up demand in food and beverage and I don't see uh, uh, food and beverage, I, I see food and beverage is going to play a very, very large role in uh, recovering whatever the number of covers we're going to lose in restaurants but because of the restrictions, we should be able to make uh, make up that from uh, food delivery working. So SMB is, is, is the way to go at this point of time. Brilliant, Atul. <clears throat> and listening to you, I also remember what Praveen was saying that our consumers are becoming smarter. They are becoming gourmets. So there is an opportunity to satisfy the gourmet in the consumers. And at the same time, with delivery, food and beverage is a new opportunity for all our businesses. And I think with that, we are almost on time uh, for the deadline of a session. And I have enjoyed this dialogue and hearing everybody across at this platform. So two or three key uh, things that stick to me. While I've listened to Chris speak of his experience in different places, what Praveen is seeing with younger consumers coming into the fold, I thought you spoke of ITC's focus in still continuing your growth and saying, how do we take care of our employees there? Sharad speaking of adaptability. So there is overall sense of rebound that is going to come back into the industry. But with it, we have to be very careful that we are still in survival, though we are seeing revival in front of us. And we have to also maintain our focus on variableizing our fixed costs. And if we do that, there is a great opportunity with technology, change in consumer behavior, and new market segments that are opening up for the industry to remodel itself for profitability. So I want to thank you, Chris, Atul, Kunal, Sharad, Praveen, and Manish for being great panelists. I have had a great time uh, listening to you. And also, Bhuvnesh, your team, Bhavna, and everybody at BW for creating this platform, A, for friends to meet, and B, for all of us to share our thoughts. Much appreciate. Thank you very much, Bhuvnesh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You are mute, Bhuvnesh. Unmute. Bhuvnesh, requesting you to unmute yourself. So, so the, uh, before the show goes out, I have a few words, right? This is my second show today with Rahul Pandit and uh, my third or fourth with him overall. But let me tell you, um, this show has been on my mind and I've been planning this for the last three months, right? Each one on this panel who sits is a king in his own right, right? Now, let me tell you the only, uh, only similarity that I can find or semblance of similarity that I can find is with those gentlemen who run those large Queen Elizabeth II kind of ships, right? They're colossus giants. They're brilliant skippers. They run giants. For those ones um, who, are in, who are trying to get into the hospitality industry or the ones who have not even made their mind up as yet, look at these skippers. Look at these captains. They, they are geniuses. I mean, they run businesses which are umpires. I mean, some of them run multi-properties, right? Uh, some of you run multi-properties. I mean, Chris and Manish are pretty much neighbors, though, uh, though Parveen is not too far. I mean, uh, each one of you, you run giants. And by the way, Atul, when your Parel property was being made, I used to spend time over there with the architect, half his contractor, because I was setting up the Hindustan Times plant over there. So that was our meeting point and the hotel was still under construction. Right? <laughs> Having said that, this was a great show. I wish we could take this longer and spend far more time. Having said that, please remember the BW Hotelier has just about started with its shows. I'm coming with a lot more series and you'll hear a lot more and I shall keep coming back to you and request you for your screen time. Thank you, Chris, for your time. I know you were in a board meeting. You still pulled out. By the way, there was a city in which I've lived and worked for 
for two postings where Chris' children were born, Doha and Qatar. Right? I speak Arabic, so I kept getting posted over there. Manish, I enjoyed staying in your hotel. Atul, I'm looking forward to going back to the Royal Bengal and soon maybe here. And of course, the Taj Land Rand has been my home for almost 10 months when I was launching Hindustan Times in Mumbai. I've stayed at the JW with Sharad, but I look forward to seeing you all and soon maybe someday in Bangalore. Thank, Thank you, you for much. your time, Kunal, Parveen, Sharad, Thank you so much. Manish, Atul, uh, yeah, Chris you. and Rahul. You're a brilliant you. host and amazing anchor. Thank you. Thank you for Thank making you the show wonderful.